My name is Melissa Marie Alexander, and I am co-chair of Trans-Ohio. Trans-Ohio has been around for 13 years. We still have no staff. We've never had staff. Um, we work all on volunteers. We have no brick and mortar. But despite that, we do a tremendous amount of work. The issue that I will talk to you about is the fact that in our community, identity documents are extremely important. I remember when I first transitioned, I ran around for almost two years with a driver's license that had the wrong gender marker on it. It's extremely embarrassing to have to produce that in situations that require you to produce a driver's license, even if you get carded at Kroger's, despite the fact I was born in the Eisenhower administration. <laughs> we have been successful in the past. Almost 10 years ago, we were successful in getting that change when we were able to get the gender marker um, to be allowed to be changed on, at the Bureau of Motor Vehicles, or a BMV, not a DMV in Ohio, um, a, with a very simple process and no surgery required. However, a couple years ago, a survey came out by the National Center for Transgender Equality that showed that only 9% of our community in the state of Ohio had been able to change their legal documents, name change, uh, driver's license, passports, etc. And we found this offensive. So an idea emerged. I met a gentleman named Ben Cooper, who had run a legal clinic program in Washington, D.C. He came to me, we had coffee one morning at Starbucks, and we talked about this idea to create statewide legal clinics for trans and gender nonconforming people throughout the state of Ohio. So we decided to do it. We need a community partner to pull this off. We found Equitas Health, which was an agency that is also only two years old. They provide the malpractice insurance through their legal department so that we can bring volunteer lawyers pro bono to come to the, and do the clinics. We also offer what every lawyer loves, CLEs. So Trans-Ohio was able to get the Ohio Supreme Court to allow us to issue CLEs to those attorneys who came. We uh, set up the system, we got the logistics down. We always provide pizza and everything for all the clients who come to all clinics. This is an example of the advertising as well as also the name and gender change guide. It's available online, both at Trans-Ohio and Equitas website. It's also how we use to train the lawyers as well who want to participate in the clinics. Problem is in Ohio, we have 88 fiefdoms. <laughs> fiefdoms in Ohio are each county and every county has their convoluted system. Some, some only allow Type. Some allow only on one uh, blue ink, black ink. Some are, the fees vary from $95 to $300 something dollars. We did the first three clinics in Ohio, or in the capital at Columbus. Uh, the logistics began to flow, but problems began to merge. Financial resources and the birth certificate. This is some actual photographs of James, my co-chair and myself banging our head against the wall for 10 years, trying to negotiate this with the Ohio Department of Health. New hope on that, we do have a lawsuit that is now pending with the ACLU and Lambda Legal. Yes. The interim solution will be uh, the passports, and those cost us money. So what do we need? Money. Show me the money. So I become a grant writer. And I wrote tons of grants. What do you think you can do? Here's the results. We got $38,000 in grants, $2,500 in donations. So these are some of the legal clinics to date. Summary, 45 clinics, 629 clients, 328 community members receiving assistance, $40,000 in financial assistance throughout the state of Ohio. Why are we here? I got a letter this morning. Thank you, Melissa, so much for sending me the money. 
You have changed my life, and I am so happy. God bless you and your work.